Calumaris, this is Calumara here. If you are new to the channel, we do redesigns. For a little while now, I've been doing a series where I rewrite the concepts from the game Yannere Simulator into my own original story with completely revamped characters, so I highly recommend checking out my playlist if you've got some time on your hands and you need background noise to draw to. And today, we are going to be discussing the highly requested concept and design of Mujiakina, the nurse character slash rival love interest from Hyansim. After my last video, I got a ton of comments of people asking if I was skipping Muja or Asu because I decided to incorporate Mida first and the answer is a big no. I just felt that for the benefit of my own story, it would make more sense that the teacher would come into play earlier than the nurse and I didn't necessarily want to stick with the order that Yan Sim has set or the fact that all the rivals should even be rivals in the first place. I think that to successfully build a fictional world, you need a strong cast of supporting characters that make the world feel believable. That's why although Nico is a major character, she isn't necessarily a rival. People can be complicated and nuanced, and their intentions aren't always clear-cut. And because of that, it's easy to mistake someone as an enemy when that might not necessarily be the case. And I wanted my world to reflect that even if I don't always succeed. If you've been keeping up with my channel, you know that I was on clinical placement for the last four weeks and I barely had any energy left when I got home. Not to mention, I was still doing university assignments while I was on placement, so I really had to buckle in and focus. But I just submitted my last assignment and I have a month before I go on my final placement block and graduating, so I'll have a bit more time to actually do things I enjoy. And that takes us to today's topic. Having first-hand clinical experience myself, I finally feel like I'm actually qualified to talk about something on my channel. So in this video, I wanted to educate you lovely Calimaris on the ins and outs of the nursing profession, discuss some misconceptions about nursing, and point out from a nursing perspective just why Yandev's nurse design is so bad, and how I would remedy it and integrate it into my story. But before we get into it, this video was made using Filmora 10, a video editing software that is beginner friendly and has all the advanced editing features you would find on a professional software like Adobe Premiere, but at a lower price and a more user friendly interface. I've been in the market for a new video editing software and I'm so excited to work with Filmora for this video because I was genuinely about to purchase the lifetime license myself. So this is a product I would have gotten anyway because Filmora pretty much offers everything I'm looking for in an editing software. Filmora has a ton of special effects and templates that make editing videos a breeze. It comes with features like green screen, motion tracking, and even its own library of copyright-free music. If you've been in an editing rut and want some fresh new ideas, or if you're looking to start making YouTube videos, I highly recommend using Filmora to get into the swing of things or elevate your content further. That's definitely what I'm planning on doing. Check out the link in my description to download Filmora 10 today! So, I'm sure you've all heard the news that apparently Yan Sim is finished now and that Yandere Dev is planning on patching in the rest of the rivals in one big update and if you haven't, that's apparently what's happening. I wanted to talk about this earlier but because I was working 8 hour shifts in the hospital unpaid, I really didn't have time to. People are saying this means Yansim is complete now and I just want to say that this definitely isn't the case. Knowing Yandev, there's gonna be bugs galore and considering how the game runs now with only one rival implemented, I genuinely have no idea how it's going to handle 9 more. Not to mention, just because it's finished doesn't automatically make it a good game. 
If anything, calling it complete now makes it a worse game, and he no longer has the excuse that it's a work in progress. I personally don't care if the game is finished or not because it has never been part of my criticism. I care more about the quality of the product and what it actually has to offer in terms of a story and characters and how immersed I feel in it. And in my opinion, it still fails on that front. So all this means to me is that Yansim is a bad finished product. But hopefully this means Yandev can move on to other things and finally get help for himself. I highly doubt it. I'm very certain he'll just use his mental health as an excuse to just keep playing video games all day, but now he's free to become a Twitch streamer like he's always wanted. So with that being said, just why is this nurse concept so bad in my opinion? I've seen several people saying that it's mostly because of the uniform, and while I do see where they're coming from, it's actually not even the worst thing about this design. I got a few people saying, oh, here comes the SGW fixing art, um, and I just want to tell you guys that I'm not complaining because the nurse is too sexy or that I can't handle that she's beautiful. I'm complaining because the way this nurse is written, she would be shredded to pieces on a real ward, and it's just an incredibly inaccurate portrayal of the professional attitudes nurses are required to have. One thing at a time though, <laughs> for now, let's start with her appearance. As someone in the profession who was drilled extensively about proper work attire in simulation labs and on my placements, I can already see at least three things wrong with the way she presents herself from a head-to-toe assessment. Uh, those three things are her hair, her dress, obviously, and her nail polish. I bet you didn't notice that, but I did because I've got those trained nurse eyes. So let's start from the top. You guys know I'm a huge fan of the color pink, and I do think Muja has very lovely hair. In fact, she has my favorite color scheme out of all the characters. The only problem is that it's not tied back. I've looked at her character model, and she definitely isn't wearing her hair in some sort of low ponytail, braid, or clip. And the first rule in nursing is to always Always make sure your hair is back because nurses handle a lot of gross body fluids and when you're leaning over to give your patient a vomit bag or emptying out their urine bags into a bottle, the last thing you want is for your hair to fall into it. On the subject of leaning over, nurses do a lot of leaning over and crouching. It's a very physically demanding job where you're on your feet for hours at a time, and when an emergency happens and your patient arrests, you're jumping on the bed and performing CPR to save this person's life. And yes, I do want to clarify that it's usually the nurses that perform CPR. In fact, nurses are better than doctors at CPR because it's mandatory for us to get our certificate renewed every year, whereas doctors don't have to do that for some reason. That's why nurses need to be able to move easily and freely without being preyed on by patients. It's a sad reality. Nursing is one of the few female-dominated professions out there, and in order to be taken seriously, you have to dress seriously. Professionalism is a big deal in nursing. Although a lot of hospitals have stuck with the dress or skirt combo, none of them are ever as short as Muja's skirt and definitely not as tight for the reasons I mentioned before. Another reason it's impractical is that I think people underestimate just how cold hospitals and examination rooms are. It's always freezing and a big reason for that is to slow the growth of germs and bacteria. But the bad thing about that is that your skin dries out super fast. So most of the time, nurses want to wear more layers, but we can't because we have to be bare below the elbows so we can wash our hands and forearms properly and not spread diseases. And that's why all modern nursing uniforms have short sleeves, kids. 
Not to mention, if you're going to be splashed with urine, vomit, or an explosive quote brown, I'd rather let my uniform take the fall, thanks. It still baffles me how some facilities still make their nurses wear white uniforms because honestly, it's not staying white for long. Like, those people do realize the classic nurse uniform came from a time when bed sheets weren't being washed, dirty bandages were being reused, and patients had to drink unsanitized sewer water, right? But aside from the length and the size of the dress, because clearly it's a couple sizes too small, another thing that really peeved me out about this uniform, and this is probably really weird for people who don't work in the health field, is that it only has one tiny pocket. Like, if you're a nurse, you know we need our pockets. We at least need to be carrying a couple of pens, a phone, a pen light to assess pupils, scissors, a handover sheet, and various scraps of paper, tape, and in some cases, a strip of paracetamol. The pocket Muja has looks like it would barely fit a pen, and that is absolutely atrocious. 0 out of 10. The more pockets I have, the happier I am. I also see a distinct lack of a fob watch, which is a nursing staple for when you're counting someone's breaths or just checking to see what time you're conducting certain assessments or giving certain medications or heck, what time this patient decided to crash and burn. All of these things are very important for documentation and legal reasons because when someone dies and the case goes to a coroner's court, you want to make sure that you cover your ass and you can show them that you've done all the right things at the right times. And here's another thing I haven't seen anyone pick up on yet. The nail polish. It's a big no-no to wear nail polish when you're working because it's an infection hazard. I have seen some nurses have nail polish, but it's kind of, they're always constantly wearing gloves as well. And that's because you can't scrub your fingers properly, which means you're potentially transmitting bacteria to your immunocompromised patient and risk giving them a healthcare acquired infection. Plus, it chips because you're constantly washing your hands with hand sanitizer, and that can contaminate your sterile field when you're doing a sterile procedure. It's just really bad form. Not to mention, when you've just handled someone's bedpan, the last thing you want is to not be able to clean it off your fingers properly and then take it home with you. Luckily, her nails are kept quite short because if it were long, that's another issue for infection control since you can get a bacteria buildup under your nails and you can actually injure someone with those nails. You do a lot of manual handling in nursing and most of the time it's for older people who literally have tissue paper skin or little babies with very delicate skin. And the last thing you want is to harm your patients, right? Well, this is where we get to arguably the worst part about this character. The design? <laughs> That's baby stuff compared to her personality and backstory. Honestly, I felt my blood pressure shooting through the roof the first time I read through her description, and I'll explain to you exactly why, because I've been stewing on this for far, far too long. So. Muja is a young nurse who desires nothing more than to take care of other people. Although, she usually ends up causing more problems than she solves due to her hair-headed and classy nature. It was so quirky. Just, just that first sentence got me. <laughs> One shot and I'm down. Oh, and also, her intelligence is not her strongest point. Huh? Excuse me? Yandev, you do realize that nurses basically learn all the same things doctors do, right? And for those of you who are saying, oh, nurses don't learn as much as the doctors because they're only learning just a little bit and you could probably finish or study nursing in a single day because you're so smart. Shut the fuck up. 
Sh if you can do that, great. Go ahead then. Do it. The world needs nurses. But this isn't ye olden days when people could just waltz into the hospital and go, Hey, I wanna be nurse, please. And the hospital is just like, Okay, here's a uniform. Off you go. Nowadays, you need to at least complete a diploma program, which is a year's worth of study, just to get work in a nursing home as a nursing assistant. To get work in a hospital, you need to complete at least a two-year degree to be an enrolled nurse or a three-year bachelor's degree to be a registered nurse. And in those two, three years, you learn all about anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, psychosocial development, mental health, pharmacology, drug administration, diagnostics, investigations, and how to keep people from dying in general. If intelligence is not her strongest suit, I genuinely have no idea how she managed to get her degree in the first place because coming from someone who facilitates supplementary sessions for pathophysiology and pharmacology, nursing is hard. We get examined on not only theoretical knowledge like how does peripheral edema happen as a result of congestive heart failure. We also get examined on our practical nursing skills from simple things like how to make a hospital bed and how to turn a patient over using slide sheets so they don't get pressure injuries to what do you do if a patient is having a heart attack or if their airways have closed up or if their blood sugar is a 2 and they're losing consciousness. And that's just the bare minimum to be qualified. That's not even getting into the workforce. But anyway, as an RN, you get to specialize in many different areas, such as aged care, private sectors, mental health, rural and remote nursing. And if you work in a hospital, you can further train to specialize in high care areas like ICU, ED, perioperative pediatrics, or cardiology. School nurses fall under the category of community nurses, which also includes settings like GP clinics and prisons, <laughs> if you can believe it. All of these specialties have different areas of focus, and for community settings in particular, a big consideration or perhaps constraint that comes into play is budget. A lot of times, they don't get as much funding as big hospitals, so they're a lot stricter with their resources because they might not necessarily have the budget to replace them. And some supplies can be really expensive, and a lot of times, it falls to the patients to pay for them, and the last thing you want is to give them a $40 dressing when they could have done with something that you could have given away for free, you know? But this bitch over here really just dumped out an entire bottle of rubbing alcohol onto the floor and making a slip hazard. What happens when a student or teacher walks past and slips and hit their heads? Oh, I know, they'll have to miss an entire day of school because now they have to be taken to the hospital to get a CT scan for their head to make sure that they haven't damaged their brain or burst a blood vessel in there. Nursing is a very high stakes, uh, emotionally, mentally, and physically demanding job that takes a lot of study and practical training to be considered qualified. For good reason too, you're literally have people's lives on your hands and the moment you take over a shift there is very very little room for error the fact that muja constantly causes more problems than she solves i genuinely don't understand how she hasn't lost her registration yet or ended up in a coroner's case and no you can't get work as a nurse while you're a student nurse because you wouldn't be a registered practitioner and that would be malpractice, my dude. It genuinely bothers me because people have no idea just how easy it is to get in trouble in nursing. 
your lab invigilators and nurse preceptors are strict as all heck, and if you're airheaded and clumsy, they'll be sure to beat it out of you before you can get registered. I've literally seen someone fail their course because they walked into their patient's room wearing their jacket. Why? Apparently because of infection control reasons and breach of professionalism. I genuinely have no idea where the ditzy, dumb, airheaded nurse stereotype came from because that literally can't be further from the truth. Heck, I would take mean, bitchy nurses over this portrayal because at least that would have been more accurate. It would have been more acceptable to me if it were like an Elle Wood situation where people constantly underestimate her because of the way she looks and acts, but she's actually really smart and capable, but this is just offensive to me. This is personally offensive to me. I take offense from this character's existence. I think a lot of times doctors tend to steal the spotlight when we think healthcare. We don't really see the other members of the interdisciplinary teams, like not even nurses, but the physiotherapists, the speech therapists, the dietitians, the pharmacists. They all play an equally important role. Healthcare provision is a team effort and we support each other. Doctors are humans too. They make mistakes, they chart the wrong medications because they've been awake for two days straight and are thinking of a different patient. Part of the nurse's job, the pharmacist's job, is actually picking up on these mistakes and circling back and seeing if they're really sure the order is correct. And we can really only do that if we have the same level of knowledge, obviously with different expertise, but it's important that we're on the same page so that we can work effectively as a team. Plus. A lot of times, nurses will ask doctors to prescribe specific medications because we follow the patient's development in real time and notice that they need it, and because we're also educated about medications. We're never just following orders blindly. Nurses are constantly making decisions and planning ahead so that we can keep on top of our insane workload. And that's if we don't get any code blues or falls on the shift, which would just completely derail everything. But it happens. So the fact that this character even exists angers me. Because I think back to all the sleepless nights I've had doing research on strategies to prevent failure to rescue and all the 5am starts to go to work for 8 hours without pay, constantly fearing I might do something like, oh, I don't know, recap a needle in front of the facilitators and get sent home. <laughs> it's just a lot. but. I think I've ranted long enough and got most of my grievances off my chest, so for my design, I made sure to address those design issues I've pointed out, mostly pulling her hair back into a French braid which I've found from a personal experience to be very secure, giving her a bit more security with her skirt and a couple large pockets to fill with whatever she wants. For now, I've given her the essentials, a pen and pen light, scissors, and a fob watch. Oh, and of course, a staple of any healthcare practitioner, a stethoscope. I wanted to color coordinate them because that's something I personally want to do when I buy my own equipment. I'm not gonna buy any now because I'm just a broke student, but a girl can dream, you know? It just makes you look so put together. There was a nurse that facilitated my labs once who had this gorgeous rose gold fob watch and matching rose gold stethoscope and I was genuinely obsessed with her. So she was part of my inspiration for this design as well. Plus, I think it tied in really well with her pink hair, which of course I kept. And instead of pink or blue eyes, I decided to go with brown because I think that that's a pretty uncommon combination and it just makes her look warmer and more approachable. 
If you're wondering where I got the idea for this shirt and dress combo, I actually modeled it after the nursing uniform of one of the hospitals I've had my placement in. It was a private hospital so they got to choose their own uniforms and although nurses could also wear just the shirt and trousers but I've always preferred it with the dress because it's super cute. The skirt is actually a lot longer. It actually stops well below the knee but aesthetically I preferred this length in my design because it shows off the position of her legs a lot better and it just gives you a better flow of motion I guess. I know I wanted her to look relaxed but confident and maybe a bit playful as well because when you're dealing with kids, you need to have a fun personality to build any sort of rapport with them. I would know. So to show this, I gave her a half mischievous, half amused expression and I knew right away I wanted her to be spinning her stethoscope because anyone who's ever had free time and a stethoscope has done this. I also debated making the dress a light blue color because that's just the color I personally associate hospitals with, but I decided against it because I figured it's probably a bad idea to wear light colors in a school setting as a nurse. Plus, the dark gray color matched with her shoes a lot better and just pulled the whole look together. And speaking of shoes, I decided to model it after one of the shoes I used to have for labs and placements. We had to follow strict workplace requirements for footwear, which meant that they had to be slip-proof, waterproof, and fully enclosed because you'd be surprised how often your foot gets run over. You want to make sure you can easily just hose stuff off as well because the last thing you want is to take someone's giant wad of sputum home with you. Because you're on your feet for hours at a time, it's also really important that they're comfortable, so I just gave her a pair of comfy loafers. Another issue I debated on was whether or not to include the nurse's cap. See, in Western nursing, we've pretty much done away with it completely because depending on how often it's being washed, it's just another infection control hazard that doesn't need to be there. We have disposable hair caps and bandanas now, and the nurse caps don't really do a great job of covering your hair anyway. But I do know that in most hospitals in Asian countries like Japan and even my own home country, Indonesia, nurses still wear those caps and very much model their uniforms after the classic all-white shirt and skirt look. So I wanted to pay tribute to that. Besides, this character isn't working in a hospital where diseases are literally everywhere, so I think it should be alright. For her personality, as I've mentioned briefly, I wanted this character to be fun and approachable, who seems like she's really good at keeping secrets if you tell her. I want her to have this magnetic personality that draws you in, more so than her admittedly drab uniform. She's like this big sister figure you never had who isn't afraid to tell you off for being stupid but also give you really good life advice whenever you need it. You could come to her to chat if you're feeling troubled and she's always going to support you and try to push you in the right direction to overcome those troubles. As someone who has worked with a lot of nurses firsthand, I can tell you for a fact that there are a ton of gorgeous nurses out there. But I think what adds to their appeal isn't their sexy uniform, because in a lot of cases, they're just in scrubs, which are gl glorified pajamas. What makes them appealing is the fact that they're capable and compassionate. They're taking care of you and advocating for your best interests when you aren't able to. But she's not all sweet and gentle. This character has nerves of steel and a strong backbone. She can push past any confronting situation and isn't afraid to speak up for what she believes is right. 
being squeamish is unfortunately not a luxury you can afford when you're a registered nurse and being able to put your foot down and say no when you feel uncomfortable and compromised is an essential survival skill all nurses have to learn in their practice. I do imagine her still being quite young, but before working for the school, she started off in ED where everything is extremely fast-paced and acute, and one second can mean the difference between someone going back home that same day and living the rest of their lives normally or becoming paralyzed for life. Basically, she's seen and gone through some shit and it's toughened her up and made her wiser as a person. I think one thing that a lot of people don't realize about nurses is that they are tough as nails. Having to go through what they do every single day, being subjected to things no regular person would ever have to see or experience in their lifetime, being beaten down and feeling like a failure because you couldn't physically be everywhere at once, and yet having to grit your teeth pick yourself up and go on with the shift because your patients need you. And then you do it all over again the next day. It takes a crazy amount of resilience. And that's not including workplace drama where doctors treat you like shit because they think you're below them and unimportant, or the senior nurses that treat you like shit because you happen to be less experienced than they are. And I think that's why a lot of nurses end up being so jaded and cynical. That's just how they cope. But for this character, instead of becoming jaded and cynical, she uses humor to cope with her stresses. She's a bit of a goofball and she loves to chat and crack jokes, but don't think she's all sunshine and rainbows. She has a bit of a sass and attitude to her that will catch you off guard from time to time too, and she doesn't take shit from anyone. Due to her ED background, she's very diligent, thorough, and great with time management as she always gets her work done ahead of time. Community nursing has a much different focus from ED, where you're mostly providing critical care interventions. In community nursing, there's greater emphasis on health education, health promotion, and creating health programs to increase the overall well-being of a community. It's arguably a lot more slow-paced than ED, and because she always gets her work done as soon as it comes up, most people actually think she hardly does any work at all because whenever they come in to see her, she's just lounging around or taking a stroll around the campus. Of course, little does she know that her workload is about to increase tenfold. Which brings us to her implementation. At first, I was pretty uncertain about whether the concept would work in the first place because from several articles I've seen online, it seemed as though Japanese schools don't even have actual nurses on staff, but rather they have their health education teachers or yogo take on the role. I've linked these articles in my description if you guys want to check them out, and although they are fulfilling a nursing role, they aren't necessarily registered nurses themselves, so I wasn't sure if this character could even exist. What Japanese schools do, from my understanding, is that they will have doctor's visits over regular intervals to conduct full physical examinations of their students, and any serious health concerns that happen in between don't get seen to at school premises, but rather taken straight to hospital or sent home, which makes sense. Not to mention, you don't really need nursing degrees to slap a band-aid on a cut. But a lot of Japanese media do often show school nurses. A recent example would be My Hero Academia, but obviously they would need one considering what the school is for. So I decided to ask my roommate who is from Japan and went to Japanese schools growing up, and she told me that although they did have a nurse at school, she wasn't sure if they were actually a registered nurse or if they were just a teacher that students referred to as a nurse. 
Either way, I just looked up job openings for school nurse positions in Japan and managed to find a few. And all of the job listings required the applicants to have a registered nurse qualification, so I'm gonna go with that. I think that this particular school, since it's a high school and most high schools in Japan are private and aren't subsidized, so parents actually have to pay tuition, I would imagine that they would probably have the budget to hire a registered nurse on staff anyway. So this nurse character really comes into play after Akira Murakami, aka the teacher, starts to take a more active role in the story. Now, to summarize Murakami Sensei's week, the different routes start to diverge. Depending on your choices and how you've dealt with the rivals, Murakami Sensei will either become an adversary or an ally. If she suspects you of foul play, she will actively begin investigating your background and keeping a much closer eye on you to gather evidence against you, putting you at risk of being exposed and sent back to the hospital, or worse, being sent to the police. But if you have a positive relationship with her, she will provide you with additional support to stabilize your mental state and vouch for you if any outside suspicion arises or possibly give you advice on how to navigate relationships better, which will undoubtedly help your chances with Seiya, aka Senpai, and keep your identity safe. I've gotten a lot of comments of people suggesting that the nurse should be someone who worked in the mental health ward the protagonist was being treated in, but given that the protagonist had just enrolled in the school and the nurse has been working there for a while, she wouldn't have known her anyway, so it would be pretty insignificant. Plus, I think that an ED background would be more suited to the character I'm going for and the setting of the game as well. And I feel like having the nurse be one of the nurses at the mental health facility would effectively end the game right away because she'll recognize you, wonder why you're using a fake name, why you're going to a public school when you have a treatment order to stay home. And, you know, the jig is up. So I really wanted to avoid that. However, given Yan Chan's previous interactions and experiences with nurses, I thought it would be an interesting angle to play where seeing anything hospital related like stethoscopes, pen lights, and the smell of hand sanitizers gives her PTSD flashbacks of the year she spent as a mental health inpatient, how abandoned she felt, how uncertain her fate was. So up until this point, she would have avoided the nurse's office like the plague and throughout the game, if you happen to catch sight of the nurse, it will immediately trigger mental deterioration the same way senpai causes that pink flustered aura in Yanse. However, an incident occurs in this new week. At this point in the game, the stress of what you're doing really starts to impact Yan Chan's mental functioning. If you're going with the genocide and manipulator routes, without any support or coping mechanisms, Yan Chan's mind begins to break down, and the grip she has on reality and her own identity begins to waver. Meanwhile, if you're playing the pacifist route, the guilt of her masquerade and pretending to be someone else around people she cares about starts to weigh on her. In all circumstances, Yan Chan experiences a panic attack that causes her to be taken to the nurse's office. And that's when we meet our nurse character. You wake up in the nurse's office the bright examination lights beaming down on you and causing you to squint your eyes. You smell that unmistakable scent of hand sanitizer and antibiotics, that special detergent they use to mop the floors. Your heart begins to race. Were you back in the hospital? Had your secret been uncovered? Or was this reality? 
had you never left in the first place and were just hallucinating the entire time. As you lurch up, the sudden shift from laying to sitting up sends your head spinning. Whoa, where do you think you're going? You hear a voice say. It was a youthful voice, speaking with an almost playful tone. You feel a hand on your shoulder, guiding you back down to the bed. As your eyes finally come into focus, you see a young woman with soft pink hair and an unmissable nurse's cap. Wh where am I? You ask, frightened. The woman smiles gently at you, raising her eyebrow. A nurse's office. Are you alright? Yeah, you lie, attempting to put on a smile as best as you can. Just a bad case of white coat syndrome. And so, the nurse gives you a drink of water, takes your blood pressure, counts your pulse and breaths. She takes your temperature and asks you if you have any pain. You say no, but you're on edge. This was all too familiar. It brought back too many bad feelings. As expected, your blood pressure was through the roof and the nurse tells you to stay in for a while so she can keep monitoring you. But just when you thought you would have another panic attack, the nurse speaks up again. Oh yeah, you have a few visitors. And she opens the door to a stampede of girls rushing to your side, as well as senpai. Of course, that purely depends on who you've chosen to befriend and your relationship level with senpai. And if you've chosen to manipulate or kill an ignored bonding with senpai, you're left alone with no one to see you. With friends coming in to see you, the nurse is less likely to be concerned. The more you have, the more secure she will deem you to be and the less you have, the more likely she will ask you to come in and see her regularly because she wants to offer that support to you. The frequency of which, depending closely on how many people you can rely on as a support system. Of course, when you sit in the nurse's office, the quicker your mental health depletes and the less likely you'll be able to do anything for the rest of the day aside from attend class. Not to mention, depending on how you've been treating people around you, for example, if you've ever physically or mentally hurt another student without being too tactful about it, they might just mention your name to the nurse, which then increases the likelihood she would try to counsel you and mentally examine you. And of course, when that happens, that immediately alerts her that there's something wrong. The nurse character is the biggest obstacle thus far because unlike the teacher, her recommendation alone is enough to send you back to the mental health ward. She doesn't need to gather evidence, so the slightest slip up would be all the more fatal. On top of that, she is the embodiment of your past, your fears, a constant reminder of what your life could be should you take the wrong step. Even on the outside, you're faced with the same medical workers you worked so hard to deceive to let you free. Your resolve is breaking, your stress is building, and you have a million eyes on you, watching your every move. The goal for this week? Survive. Yan Chan's mental state will be at a constant depletion. It's a battle against her own mind, and your only objective is to fight against your darker urges, stop yourself from doing anything rash, and convince this nurse that everything is okay and she has nothing to worry about. Of course, Senpai notices just how troubled you are, and he decides that just as you've been there for him all that time, he wants to be there for you too. But what does he have planned? You'll have to wait and find out. This is the final design. The name I decided for her was Haruka Azami, with Azami being her last name. 
I was really happy with how she turned out. I know I'm super biased and I say this to literally all my redesigns, but she is my favorite one I've done so far. I'm really happy with her color palette and I decided to use that blue as the background which really tied everything together. As an added touch, I decided to draw some electrocardiogram traces for the background. Yep, those white squiggly lines are it. <laughs> if you've made it this far, try and guess what these traces are showing in the comments below. Here's a hint. The very bottom one is a normal heart rhythm. I hope you guys enjoyed the video because I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, if you couldn't tell, I just ranted for about 20 minutes. Um, I have a few ideas I want to try out in the future as well, so I hope you stick around for that. One of them being turning these concepts into a light novel in video form and reading out the story I'd written over a speed draw for the illustration of that particular chapter. It's gonna be under the title Anomaly, a Yandere love story, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for the amazing fan art. I absolutely love it when you guys send me art because you're all so talented and I feel like sometimes um, I shouldn't be the one with the big platform. Uh, anyway, if you haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe if you want to keep up to date to my next installment. I have a Discord server where I interact with members pretty regularly, so join that. And I also have a Ko-fi account if you want to support me. The links are all in the description. Please follow me on all my social media, check out my comic because that will make me really happy. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!